Okay, so uh, tell me a little bit about yourself and how you got involved in the disability community. Yeah, I'm Kat Steele and I work in the mechanical engineering department at the University of Washington. And most of our research here focuses on understanding how people move and especially whether it's walking or wheeling, uh, understanding how we can support mobility and participation in everyday life. Um, and we work a lot with both kids and adults with disabilities. And uh, most of my background uh, comes from both growing up uh, with family and friends with disabilities. And then uh, I've worked in hospitals for a long time. So I started at Denver Children's Hospital and then later Lucille Packard Children's Hospital, um, but always as the like engineer in the background, uh, working uh, with the, the families and the clinicians. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. So tell me a little bit about your research. What's that about? I know you talked about that briefly. Yeah, so most of our research these days post pandemic is a lot with kids and understanding how we can support mobility and early play. Uh, uh, right now we're having a lot of fun with the Explorer Mini, which is the first uh, powered mobility device approved for kids under three. And so we're understanding how young kids uh, who will likely use wheeling as their main form of transportation and exploration learn to use a joystick based device and uh, also just uh, seeing how we can best set up play environments and other things to support their early play and development. Uh, and then we also do a bit of work mainly with older kids with cerebral palsy, uh, understanding how devices like exoskeletons or certain surgical procedures uh, can either help or hinder their uh, goals for daily activity and participation. Mm -hmm. Cool. So I I also understand that you also work with ability and the ability and innovation lab, create and the amp lab. You know what sorts of things are you doing in that in those areas and like, um how 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 do you make how do you what sorts of things do you do to improve people's mo people's mobility to, people's mobility you know and just kind of like evaluating what works and doesn't work for people with disabilities. It's a two-parter, so. Yeah, so those are the three main groups we like work with, un with in our umbrella at the University of Washington. So the Ability and Innovation Lab uh, is like our little lab in mechanical engineering where we like to talk and think about how people move and explore. And then we're lucky enough to have a shared lab and that's the AMP Lab. It stands for Amplifying Human and Robotic Movement and Performance. We're really bad with acronyms. Uh, but the AMP Lab is a shared lab between College of Engineering and Rehabilitation Medicine, where we basically, it's a big space where we have all the fun tools that we like to use to analyze how people move. So we have camera systems, we have instrumented treadmills, we have force plates, uh, we have all kinds of sensors for measuring your muscle activity um, and other things about the body like heart rate or oxygen. Um, and then we also have just a large space where we can, for example, have play sessions with uh, powered wheelchairs or other devices. And so that's the AMP Lab. And then CREATE is kind of a big umbrella group across campus, all focused on accessible technology and experiences. And so it draws across the UW as well as with community partners and Microsoft, um, understanding how we can both make technology more accessible and make the world more accessible through technology. Um, so those are our three big groups and they all are intertwined and connected and give us the excuse to do fun and cool work. <laughs> and um, a lot of our work is driven by local community members and their requests. So for example, there haven't often been many powered mobility options before kids turn five. And so both working with Heather Feldner and our local Go Baby Go chapter, looking at things like ride on cars. And now that we have the Explorer Mini, um, understanding how we can support more families getting access to the Explorer Mini in their home. Um, and so that's a, a mouthful. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I have I have talked to Heather Feldner in the, in oh, the yeah. past and I got to learn a little bit about her work. Uh, it's really cool and awesome. Um, so like, um, my next question here is like, um, let's see, uh, any stakeholders that you sort of work with 
in your efforts? Yeah, so we partner with um, both the families, local families that we work with and the local clinicians. So especially at Seattle Children's Hospital uh, in Provale. And then we're also pretty involved, for example, with Seattle Adaptive Sports and Outdoors for All. Um, we sponsor design projects and other uh, things where engineers might be useful uh, for different partner community organizations. Cool. My last question here is, you know, like, how can, like, we, we as a society create an inclusive world for people with disabilities, you know, like, how can certain technologies and an event and certain inventions that are aimed at improving people's mobility, you know, make a difference in people's lives? Yeah, so for me as an engineer, you know, a lot of my career has been thinking about, like, the human body and understanding how we can support movement when you know looking at muscle and tendon and bones and I love working with my orthopedic surgeons and rehab medicine partners but lately I've been uh, challenging myself for as much as I think about the human body to equally think about how we can address and dismantle some of the environmental and societal barriers that cause disability and so whether that's mapping the neighborhood around a family when they're about to get a new power wheelchair to understand are they going to have accessible routes to be able to go um, around and explore or if a new kid is going to be getting a new device how do we help set them up so that their home and their school is ready for success and there we can use things like wearable technology and other sensing techniques um, but it's been a paradigm shift for me because as much as i love learning about the human body and how amazing muscles and bones are recognizing that a lot of what causes disability are these environmental and social structures. So spending kind of equal time tackling and thinking about both um, is one, one way that we like to challenge ourselves as engineers and designers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are important points.